We are jumping into the Atlantic with an update on hurricane season. It looks like by the time we get to the end of this week into next weekend, we could have a hurricane on our hands. Right now, it's called Investigation 92L, and we are going to jump into those details with meteorologist Kevin McKay. But Kevin, before we talk about what's happening right now, let's focus on the projected outcomes, the predictions for this hurricane season. Yeah, so NOAA updated their seasonal outlook on May 26. This is their final submission. This is what we're going to move forward with. And it, when you see the, the, the range for the name storms, the hurricanes, mm -hmm. the major hurricanes, they all sandwich the average. So it looks like we're going right up the middle, but you always have to remember it just takes one hurricane. Like last year, we had Ian down in Florida to make the season uh, really impactful and really memorable. And of course, it depends what month we're in. June is just the start of all of the action. Likely we see some action in June, we get a break and then things really peak. So let's take people through this average of really the intensity of hurricane season by month. Yeah, so it, you need the water, all the fuels coming from the water. So you need the warmest waters, just like when you're at the cottage. August, it's a lot better to swim than June, even though June might have the stronger sun and uh, maybe some warmer air temperatures. But yeah, we, we're just kind of getting into that stage where some parts of the ocean are warm enough to support the development of hurricanes. So this is uh, just the, the first of many to come. All right, so let's talk about Investigation 92L right here. We're going to focus in on this energy, this wave in the atmosphere. It's not a wave in the ocean. It's a wave in the atmosphere that meteorologists are tracking. And this is just south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Yeah, and it's going to get caught up in the trade winds, and that's why it's coming from the east to the west. And that red blob, that's kind of the margin of error where they're keeping uh, a focus and you can see the greater Antilles are in there so that's more about next weekend uh, once it gets really developed and all those squiggly lines you see running out there like ant trails those are all the different model runs they're the ensembles and each has their own algorithm and that's where they're each predicting the storm's going to track. Now we have to look at the water temperatures as you were talking in order to get the development of this. And right now let's focus on this yellow zone because for mid June, it's actually quite rare for a, full, a storm to form here. Yeah, because it's normally you, you need to be forming over the warmest waters at this time of the year. And it's not, the warmest waters are rarely in the central or even uh, Eastern Atlantic. So we've only had three hurricanes develop in that region on the east side of 60 degrees west. So this is definitely an outlier. And also you're gonna come back to it in a bit, but look at that in two, uh, just a few years ago when we had Brett form in that region. Yeah, Brett is going to be a name we're going to mention again in a second. But Kevin, as we look at this here, the typical tropical formation, this is usually where we would see an early June storm, right? Yeah, this is where the water is a little shallower. It stays warmer in the winter. It warms up quicker. And you also get the added uh, influence from uh, the continent. So the outflow from Mexico and South America, that can help aid that convection that all gets initiated. Now, when it comes to this storm, September-like sea temperatures, that's going to be a headline in terms of the development. So what exactly are we talking about here? Yeah, so a hurricane needs water temperatures to be 27 degrees. That's where it gets all of its food. That's what it's going to feed on. And when you see a two to three degree temperature anomaly, that doesn't seem like much. But when you're talking about the ocean, that is really big and it's biggest in the central Atlantic. So that's why we're actually seeing this rarity in uh, the formation as far east as it is. All right, and here's a reminder of some of those Atlantic storm names. If 92L becomes named, it will officially be Brett.